topic, I actually kind of came up with it when I, I walk a lot. Uh, well, I try to walk like three or four times. It started out in COVID because I needed to start moving. <laughs> you know, I'm the type that likes to stay at home and yeah. I make lists and I read and you know what I mean? Like I, I yeah, so I needed to get out and do that. And, um, but since then I've just really grown to love it because it has not only helped me physically, but it's helped me spiritually. I have, you know, this extended time to just pray and focus, or I listen to messages like preaching and stuff, because sometimes pastor's wives, you know, and, and some, you know, are really busy, you know, <laughs> during church. So you don't always get to sit and, you know, just so sometimes I just need to listen to some messages or, you know, something like that. So that's kind of where I got the inspiration was I was, kind of thinking about, you know, health benefits, physical benefits, you know, in my life compared to spiritual benefits. And there's so many similarities. So that's where I got this topic. It's about spiritual health. Um, I don't have any notes to give you. If you want to take notes, that's fine. Otherwise, just listen. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I might ask some of you to look up verses. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. yeah, if you don't want to just say, I don't. Um, but I might give, I think I'll give you them now, and that way you can be ready. Do you want to look up verses too? Okay. It's 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. Um, Carol, you can look up Acts 27, 33 through 36. <laughs> if you need me to repeat it, I will. Um, Tiff, you can look up Galatians 5 to 22. Okay, and Julie, you can look, or I'm sorry, Jen, you can look up 1 Peter 2.2. 2. Um, I can't remember your name. Is it Elizabeth? Okay. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3.2. And let's see. You can look up Titus 2.3-5. You can look up 1 Timothy 4.11, and that should really get us going. Does anybody need a repeat? Did you just say 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20? Yep. Yes. Yes. Acts 27, correct? Yep, Acts 27, 33 through 36. Okay, and I'll let you know when I need you. That way, it just helps and gives me a break from talking. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, so I, I noticed a lot of similarities between like physical health and spiritual health. Now, I'm not going to be sharing like diet plans, fitness. <laughs> I'm, I'm no like, girl, you know, <laughs> you know, I mean, I found some things that have been helpful to me, but that's not the emphasis. But there are some comparisons and um, I just find it interesting. It helped me. That's what I hope it helps you. Now, health is defined as the overall condition of an organism at a given time. So that means like your health is something that can change, okay? So you might be in better health than you were maybe a year ago, but you might be in worse health, you know? It's, it's something that your health, it's just, you know, in that moment. So right now I'm feeling pretty good, but there have been times, you know, that, um, you know, I may be dealing with, you know, just stomach issues or whatever. Um, <coughs> I know a lot of you have like food allergies and some have gone through just different things. So you understand what I'm saying. So good or bad, your health is for in that moment, okay? So you can change it, something you can change sometimes, you know, get, get my idea here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the same is spiritually. If you think about it, maybe you are closer to the Lord th than you were like a year ago or six months ago. You can kind of look back and see Maybe you were closer, but maybe you were farther now, which, hey, if you are, good time for revival, you know? Mm -hmm. It's good to take inventory of that. Um, so you think about, you know, when you look back and say, you know, and you realize, you know, maybe I am farther from God. I used to, you know, read the Bible more. I used to desire, you know, to read the Bible more or to tell somebody about Jesus. Or, you know, maybe coming to church has been, like, tiring, and you know, like you can get to that point sometimes. Um, think about that stuff and you know, can think about the why, you know. Uh, it's time for a checkup basically. And the Bible does command us to take care of both our body physically, 
but our spirit as well. So 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20. So right there, it says it both, your body and your spirit. So they're both important, okay? Um, so we're going to start with nutrition, okay? And that's for the bulk of it. Now, I like to eat. I'm looking forward. <laughs> I'm looking forward to the fried chicken, the potato salad, and all the other goodies that are out there. Trust me, I, I like food, okay? And food is important, okay? I know sometimes it gets bad rap, you know, like, you know, because as Americans especially, we just have so many choices mm -hmm. and access, right? Um, but nutrition is food, and it's important to fuel your body for strength and mood. And I found these verses so interesting. So Carol, read uh, verses 33 through 36 in Acts 27. Anybody ever been hangry? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know who came up with that term, but it cracks me up because I've felt that way before. You know, if you haven't eaten for a while or something, um, you just, you just, oh, I got to have something. Or maybe you don't even know why am I so, oh, just feed me and I'll be okay. You know, I notice it with my kids. Sometimes they might start, you know, just acting kind of, uh, you know, and if I give them a snack or something, it helps. And I just found that that is really in the Bible. He's like, you've been fasting, you know, for your health, you need to eat. So he gave, you know, he took the bread, they began to eat. And it says, then were they all of good cheer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just found that great. And the same happened spiritually. So see, physically in the Bible, I mean, it talks about the importance of nourishing your body, but the same happened spiritually. Um, and what we're supposed to do is we're supposed to feast on things that will help us with our spiritual stamina and um, the fruits of the Spirit. So did I give you Galatians 5, mm -hmm. 22 and 23? But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. Mm -hmm. So just as you're eating physical food, you know, for strength, but also for our mood, that it does help us, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's the same spiritually. You need spiritual strength to endure hardness and, and the, you know, different attacks, you know, that go on, to, you know, through the devil and stuff. And, um, but it helps you to have that love, that joy. I mean, that's how you're going, your, your mood so to speak, is going to be better is when you feed yourself spiritually. And so, you know, some of the, the foods the Bible talks about, the first one is milk, okay? That's mm -hmm. like the most simple thing, okay? We got baby Weston, and right now he's just feeding on milk. He's, he's brand new, okay? That's the same with new believers. When new believers come in, I don't know, you know, I don't know everybody's spiritual condition. I don't know how long anybody's been saved. But if you're a new baby, it's milk. It's that gospel and, and just that, that basic stuff that that's what their nutrition is. Uh, First Peter 2.2. 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk, sorry, sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Right. So they need that milk, just like Weston needs that milk to grow and he's growing <laughs> it works but the same with the new believer and, and if you've been saved for a while you remember now you weren't ready for like you know 
certain teachings of the Bible that, you know, it's just too much. You just need those basics, and you start with the gospel. You know that Jesus, you know, died on the cross for our sins. He shed his blood. Those, those basic tenets are the things that they need, and they can build upon that. And that's what Weston's going to do. He's going to, you know, go for milk, and then those babies grow into toddlers and kids and so on. That's when we start giving them some meat, okay? And I'm not just talking about, like, a steak or something, but, you know, they start getting something a little more solid that they can handle. So they'll add solid food to their diet, and the Bible calls it meat. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 2. I have said you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it. Either yet now are you able. Yes, and so, and Paul's talking, too, about, like, uh, carnal Christians, you know, people that are saved, but they're, you know, away from God. They're not living right. And he's like, you know, at this point, you should be able to handle more. You should be able to have meat. You're not a baby, okay? If, you know, Weston, you know, got to be like, say, my kid's age, you know, like in nine, ten years old, and he, they could still only handle milk. They couldn't, you know, there's probably a problem there, you know. Um, it's just there's a sign of maturity there. They should be able to handle a little bit more. And as we grow as Christians, we got to realize that we've got to grow. So when you're, you're carnal and you don't care about it, you know, you're not going to be able to handle the word of God when you read it or you hear the preaching. You're, you're either not going to understand it because you're choosing to, you don't want to digest it. You can't handle it, right? We shouldn't be like that, okay? The milk, it's for the babies. It's time to grow. So, you know, if you've been saved 10 years and you still don't, you know, haven't seen any growth in your life and you act pretty much like you did when you're, there's a problem there. It's time for a checkup, okay? So definitely we need to have me, as the Bible calls it. It's sound doctrine. First Timothy 4, 6. Did I give anybody? I don't think I did. So what, what that says is, um, there's uh, just a part in there. I'm not reading the whole verse, but it says, nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. So see that spiritual nourishment is that sound doctrine. Let me tell you, it's so important. I am so concerned by ladies, all of Christian ladies, who just eat up reading all these Christian books that are available. And I, mean, I don't like, again, I don't know you enough to know it's you and I don't wanna offend anybody. But here's the truth, is a lot of that stuff is such garbage. And it's mm -hmm. what my husband said, how did he say it? It's a lie wrapped up in truth, or truth wrapped up in a lie? Truth wrapped, truth wrapped up, up in a lie. lie. Right, and that's what it is. You will find some truth, you will. There's gonna be something in there. But some of these, they're good writers. They really appeal to our emotions and stuff. But that's not me, it's barely milk. It's, it's just not worth it. So you, we need to be careful about what we're reading, listening to. Like I said, like I listen to, you know, podcasts of preaching or whatever. Got to be careful who I listen to. Mm. Always check everybody out. Don't just take somebody's recommendation for it. Check out who they are. Do they have a testimony of salvation? You know, I mean, wh what are they preaching or writing from? Um, and it, look, we have access to Google and DuckDuckGo is what I use. <laughs> You can find out whatever you need. It doesn't take long. Social media, go look on their accounts. You can find, I can, I find stuff out in about 10 minutes. I can assess whether that person uh, is worthy of influencing me because they are worthy. Give them, give them your, your red flags right off the bat. What are the things that... Well, the number one thing and the easiest thing is do they teach or preach in front of men? That's wrong. The Bible says it's wrong, uh, you know, that women are not to usurp, usurp authority over men. So that's the one that is the easiest way to cancel it. If they do that, don't even bother. You don't even have to look any further. So that's my main one. And then there's other things. Like I said, I try to look, you know, most of them have a website. Look and see if they have a salvation testimony. Most don't. They talk, you know, they talk religious talk, but it's all like flowery and, and there's just no sign. Don't let them influence you. There are other things, and if you need, rec I always tell my ladies, if you need recommendations, I've, I've got some. Over the years, I've compiled a list, you know, it may not be the biggest list, but 
it's enough. We don't need that. And most of all, you got the word of God. You're not mm -hmm. going to exhaust it. And if you find it hard to read, you know, there's ideas for that as well. Um, so, yeah, if you have a question, I know, you know, we've talked about it a lot. You know, she'll tell you, you know, no, this person's not good. You know, use her in that area because I know she's very knowledgeable in that and she really cares about what influences us. And social media, I don't know if you're on social media, but a lot of people in my church are. And so I'm constantly like, be careful. Even those little like uh, reels are called, maybe TikToks or something. I don't, you know, they're the little videos. There's so much false teaching and just garbage out there. And if, you know, if you are not in the word of God, you don't have that discernment to know it because it's gonna sound good. And especially I think women are led astray more. You think about Eve in the garden, so we're very susceptible because, again, we're emotion-based. So we got to know truth to be able to make the better choices. So meat, sound doctrine. Um, I just like the wording of that. Nourished up in the words of faith and of good doctrine. And that comes from the preaching and the teaching of God's word. You're able to continue to grow in grace and knowledge. And that's found in 2 Peter 3.18. Okay, so we feed ourselves, right? We go from milk to meat, okay? And we continue. It doesn't end. You've never arrived. I've not arrived. I even, going through this, I was like, oh. I, in fact, that verse, nourished up in the, I was like, oh, that's awesome. You know, so you're, it, it's like, you're always supposed to be doing that. But then it's not just about you, okay? You're supposed to be feeding others. Okay, and the more believers grow in the Lord, the more we should be feeding or teaching, basically, is what it is. Okay, so God's word, we need to be teaching God's word to others. Uh, Titus 2, 3 through 5. That's okay. <laughs> Maybe I said it wrong. Not false accusers, not given to much wine, teachers of good things, that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children, to be discreet, chaste, keepers at home, good, obedient to their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. All right, so now that's really geared t towards women, us, right? And um, not being a man, but I can see we're all the older women, aren't we? <laughs> I don't know. How old are you, Jen? I'm going to be 40 in August. Okay. Well, you're, you're, on you're on the cusp, right? <laughs> Kristen, if she was in here. Well, you know, Kristen and others, you know, the younger ones, you know, the new moms, the newly marrieds, and, you know, 30s and stuff. Um, yeah, I'm kind of like, I still need the teaching of older women, but then I am the older woman. Like, you know, like, it's, yes. You never stop learning. Right, exactly. So, even if you're 80 years old, right. you can still learn. Right, and so this command that the age of women, you know, that's because you've got experience. Okay, and yes, I mean, uh, we were talking about this the other day, even with Kristen, like when I was 16, I used to be friends with, you know, this woman, she was, I guess, in her 60s, maybe early, I mean, and she's just like, what in the world? But I like, she liked to cook, she liked to sing, she taught me things, just her talking about her life experiences. I still remember things from that, you know, so, you know, I think there's an idea. One time I saw it on Facebook. Let's see, this is that social media. But there was these women that I knew and talking about, like, the younger generation. And one said, I don't have time to, you know, talk, talk to them, whatever. My kids are grown, whatever. Well, oh, wow. I could not sit there because it was on a public forum. And I knew them. And I said, I, I didn't say anything. I put those verses. She didn't say anything. But the thing is, you're not done just because your kids are raised. Right. Okay, we're Christian ladies. We want, to, don't you want the next generation coming up to be spiritual? Or do you like the way the world is going in the culture? I know I don't. So, so don't think like, I'm done, you know, kids are grown. I don't, you know, no. Invest, like for you, you know, some of you, maybe you have grandkids. 
invest in those grandkids. I mean, really pour into them just like you would your own kids. Um, and then, you know, like I said, the ladies here, you know, at church, you know, and even each other, it doesn't, it's not just limited, but you have different life experiences that people need to know about. You know, if you've got some, you know, success stories, you know, about raising your kids or marriage, or even things that you did wrong, mm -hmm. let them yeah. learn from that. I could tell things wrong, you know, like this is what I did and it really wasn't a good idea, it didn't work, didn't help, you know, whatever. That's what you're there for. And all of these areas, too, um, listed. And if you want a good Bible study, go through those verses and, and get uh, like an 1828 Webster's Dictionary is the best as far as defining the words in our King James Bible. Just go through, look up words, even if you think you know them. It will open up passages even more for you. And write that out and, and think about ways. How could I apply this? You know, how could I be there? also a good gauge for anybody that you're listening to or, yes or yes if you're wondering or you know should I be following their blog should I be reading their book if any of that is contrary yes if they're contrary to that then that's their no don't give them your ear you're gonna find out that a lot of them aren't teaching you to love your husbands right. to be keepers at home to be good and obedient to your own husband. Those are words that a lot of them, you it's know, like, nope. they're going to explain yeah. that away and yes. give you yes. an alternative for that. So that's also because good. most of them don't live no. this. You know, they go and they're they're off on their book tours and they're trying to do interviews and Which they're is why spending. So popular. Right, right. And then you know, the the trouble is, you know, you don't realize it, but when you really look into their lives, their homes are a mess a lot of times. You know, there's so many times I've seen this person get divorced, you know, um, maybe somebody I read a long time ago, and it's like, well, now they're divorced, and you know, not to say that God can't use them, but God doesn't want to use them in that capacity, and so women are looking up to them, and look, I the lie that women are being sold is that we can, you know, work like full-time like career-wise I'm talking I'm not saying it's wrong to have a job but you know just focus on that career and, and move up that corporate ladder and really be something make a name for yourself and you can raise your family you know successfully as well I am sorry you cannot you cannot do both things well you can do both things but you cannot do both things well and there's a reason why uh, our Bible says what it says, okay? There is things that uh, women are just meant to do and God equips us to do them well with his help. And um, so I'm just, you know, this is where you have either lived it or you know it, you know, either you did it right or wrong. Use it to teach others, you know, and encourage them in all these things. They need your encouragement. Don't don't be mean about it, you know. You know have wisdom, you know, speak the truth and love sort of thing. Um, but yes, we need to teach, so feed others. Um, in Colossians 3.28, it says to preach, warn, and teach. Okay, I don't think that's just for, you know, pastors because, you know, the Bible does tell us to, you know, go into all the world and preach the gospel. So it's not telling us to get up in front of everybody. It's, it's that, you know, you're going and proclaiming something. Mm -hmm. So you are to preach, warn, and teach, okay? And then 1 Timothy 4.11. Was that yours? These things command and teach. Okay, simple little verse, right? But it's that thought you're supposed to feed. So teach what? Well, it goes on to say, like, you're supposed to be an example to other believers, okay? People are watching you whether you think it or not. And sometimes it's like, ooh, you know, when you, when you really think about it, you know. But that can keep you on your toes. One uh, little saying, I don't know where I heard it, it's been years, but I always think about this. What if every Christian were like me? Would I be able to look up to them? Would I be able to let them influence me? I mean, that really makes you stop and think, like, you know, it is important, the things that I do, where I go, all, just all that stuff, the things that I say, um, you know, so that's just something to think about. We're supposed to be an example to believers. We're supposed to encourage them to read, study, and meditate on the truth. Uh, memorizing scripture is huge because you're not going to have your Bible with you always, and you really never know 
what's going to happen in the world. What, what if, what if, you know, I know it sounds so off and crazy, but what if we were arrested for being a Christian? Would you have enough Bible in your head and in your heart to be able to comfort you and to be able to tell others? Like, it's just something to think about. It's so important to meditate on God's word, to hide it in our hearts, and that way it can, it will come out. My husband always says, you can tell somebody who's reading their Bible because of the way they talk. And when he said that to me, I didn't understand until I just started paying attention to people. And they will, people, Christians will sound like the Bible if they're in their word. Doesn't mean they're quoting everything exactly, but you'll notice they just, you know, the Lord kind of just fills their mouth. And if you're ever going out so and if you're scared, here's something. The Bible does say that the Lord will fill your mouth, that he will give you the words. And, it, you know, you might feel like you're fumbling, but... Just trust the Lord. He'll he'll do it. I've I've said things sometimes and I'm like that, but you know, but I mean the Lord, He can use our imperfections. Look at Jonah. Okay, if He can use Jonah, He can use any one of us. <laughs> so encourage, uh, you know, others. You know, especially new believers. Really encourage them. They're not going to know how to study their Bible. They're they're not going to know a lot of things. So they need those basic things and be somebody that they can follow. Like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Okay, so how do we consume this food? Okay, regular meals. Okay, this is interesting. Uh, some of these things, well, maybe it's, I'm getting too ahead. But anyway, you can't last a week if you just eat like one to four meals. So in other words, if you just come to like Sunday morning service or if you just come to the services, you know, during the week, you know, about four services, you're really not gonna last. I mean, it's good, because what you're getting is good, it can help you, but it's really not enough. And physically, we wouldn't be able to do it. Spiritually, really, you're not be able to. That's why it's so important for you at home to take a little bit of time. And everybody's different. Some people could sit and read their Bibles and, you know, for an hour easily. I've done it before, but sometimes, you don't have that much time or maybe you're just like having a, a distracted day and you're just, you know, you just can't, sometimes maybe a chapter. Like it's more the quality of time. So if you're finding yourself reading it over and over, okay, fine, read five verses over and over, sit down, maybe, uh, you know, how can I apply this to me today? Like take a chunk somehow, but you know, as you grow, you should be able to, you know, expand on that and find more time and, um, I, for years, I never really read through my Bible. I tried, and then I'd fail, and you know, whatever. And the last few years, I'm like, I can do this. If I can read a book, I can read through the Bible. I'm like, it's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Yeah. Um, you know, so I just started. And I was like, I'd like to read it in a year. But, I mean, I'm not going to pressure it. If I don't get it done, I just want to get it done. I just want to do it, see if I can do it. And that's how I started. And now and again I don't I hope this doesn't sound like yay me because I'm not I'm actually so amazed I know that God's helped me with this but I mean last year I read it in less than a year it wasn't a ma major you know it was like November but it was less than a year and the funny thing was again I wasn't pushing myself I was actually stopping and you know looking things up and meditating on it more and I've noticed that this year I even more want to you know, and I'm, I'm getting through it quicker. And I can't even imagine because, I mean, I've got a comment. Now my husband's like, gave me a commentary. I'm looking at a commentary? Like, that's not me. But it's so interesting. I'm going through Kings, like, you know, looking up things and just kind of getting some context. And I'm see, the more you do it, the more you're going to grow. You know, you're never done. And if anybody thinks the Bible's boring, it's because they're mm. not taking that time. And you've got to set a habit. Okay, all good habits, they have to be set and they have to be followed through in order for them to become a habit. So you need more food and church is extremely important and it's a command from the Lord. Okay, but we need to eat daily. Okay, so spending time reading God's word, it's vital to your health. Now, real foods are junk. Okay. <laughs> Um, I love junk, but <laughs> you're going to get different results, aren't you? Okay, yep. so uh, just as your bodies would react to what you eat, okay, so if you're eating mostly healthy foods, it's probably going to help you feel 
good for the most part, right? The more junk you eat, that's going to affect you too. I know when I do, uh, it makes me feel very sluggish, you know? It really sits there and it's heavy and maybe it even ends up making my stomach hurt or whatever, you know? Um, but the more, if I have more of the healthy food, I feel a little more energy. I really do notice a difference. So um, it really is the same spiritually. If you're going to feed yourself junk, and I'm talking about like, you know, mostly stuff from social media, um, you know, things you maybe watch on television, even people that you're around, you know, again, people are influencing you and they're feeding you. You're filling yourself up with something. Okay, and if that's the majority, your thoughts are not going to be like, you're not going to have the mind of Christ, okay? And you're not going to be fed. You're not going to be spiritually strong. So we've got to take that time and feed ourselves spiritually. And you have a good group. I know, I think you have a text group. You know, if you're feeling like you need prayer, you're struggling, this, this is the group that you need to praying for you because they care about you. Um, so encourage one another and you can even ask each you know, what are you reading in the Bible? You know, how do you, you know, ask somebody who you feel, you know, that you've noticed is spiritual, loves the Lord. You know, how do you do your quiet time? It's okay to change things up. It doesn't, you know, there's no really right or wrong way of reading the Bible, I, I guess. You know, it's just getting that time in, that setting that daily habit and maybe share with each other how you do it. Um, so... And, and so the Bible also warns about being excessive or obsessed with food. Um, and I just found this funny because I think everybody always thinks about it just in the matter of weight. But there's a lot of, um, what do you call them, like eating disorders and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Um, that's, you know, people get obsessed with food, okay? And uh, sometimes I've even found myself to be that way. I've never had an eating disorder, but you know, so I think about like, what are we, you know, I can't wait. You know what I mean? Like you just kind of concentrate and then you, it tastes so good. I oh, could do that with cookies, taste so good and, <laughs> right? But you know what, the Bible, this is just like as extra, but you know, it is called gluttony when we're being excessive with food and that's found in Proverbs 23, 20 and 21. And it's not something we like to talk about because a lot of times we like to eat for comfort and stuff, but we, we should be careful of that. And the spiritual application is like, well, you're not, most people are not going to overdo it with healthy food. I'm, I'm not going to get sick off eating carrots because I, I'll definitely know when to stop, you know, before I even get sick, you know. It's going to be the junk. It's the stuff that's bad for you. And even spiritually, you know, you're probably not going to overdo it reading your Bible. I had a young girl, a newly saved girl, and her parents were discouraging her about coming to church and reading her Bible and stuff. And she said, Miss Laura, can I, like, what, I can't remember how she put it, but basically, can I be too much of a Christian? Like, can I read too much? Can I go? To, I was like, there is no danger there. You know, really, there's not, you're, because you're always going to be fighting your flesh and the world, and you're not going to overdo it, you know, but in the world, yeah, it's so easy to overdo it, so we don't want to be uh, gluttons either way, okay, so don't worry about overdoing it in God's Word, just go at it, the more you read, the, the better you're going to feel, okay, um, now, here's the, kind of going along with that, we, we can either choose to read our Bibles, you know, portions of scripture, you do a chapter, read a whole book, whatever, you know, we chew on them, right? <coughs> Meditate, we savor them, okay? And we allow time to digest. Like, it's not going to help you if you're like, well, that's not a good one, that song of Solomon. <laughs> but if you just read something, you know, and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace in Jerusalem. Okay, that's done. <laughs> that, that might means nothing, you know, like, you need to actually sit and, and, you know, chew on it, digest it. Um, like with Lee, when he was going into kindergarten, I used to sit and he would eat his breakfast. I would read him five verses in Proverbs and I would try to break them down. I was doing it for him. I got so much out of it. Five verses. It amazed me how much I got out of five verses. I don't know how much he got at his age, but I was training him anyway. And, it, you know, you just never know. And it's better t to overdo it, you know. But I got so much out of it. So it's okay to take small chunks sometimes. Sit on it. Meditate on it. Savor it. 
sometimes it just might hit you like what a promise you know there's a pro yeah. promises of heaven and and having a new body we won't even have to worry about all the phys right you know one day it's just we're gonna have you know perfect bodies you know it's just gonna be amazing sit and think about it think about who Jesus is how he is faithful has there ever been a time that he's not been faithful? Think about it. Go back in your memory and, and think about a victory in your life and good things. You know, that's what you got to do. You savor it, and, and that scripture will speak to you. You can do that, or you could do what I just did, read a little verse. You know, it takes you about two minutes. Maybe you're reading a little devotional on your phone, you know, like you version or something. Okay, check it off. You know, I, I love checking things off. I'm one of those people, you know? And I did my Bible room for the day and then spent the next two hours on social media. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I've been guilty of it, but it did not leave me ready to face the world or minister to my family. Right. You know, so you've got a choice. We've always got a choice, okay? But you're going to get different results and you're going to see them. And so the more you, you get this habit of feeding yourself spiritually, you look back a year from now, you're going to see a different Jen and Tiff and Laura, right? We're, we're not going to be the same. We're going to grow. But if we choose to just, you know, just be carnal, you know, and just kind of be like, whatever, I don't really need it, or lie to ourselves, like, it's enough. Mm -hmm. You're going to see a year from now, you're going to probably be weaker, you know, and you might be out of church. And I know people, not me. No, I'm here. I've seen it. I've seen it. We're all susceptible to it. So don't, don't think that. So get in the Word of God. So that was all nutrition. That was the biggest chunk. The next ones are real quick. But we need to hydrate with the water of the Word. Now, drinking water is essential. Humans can live for about three weeks without food, but they can only last three or four days without water. I did not realize that. I mean, I knew water was important, but that was interesting. That was found on Harvard Health. Over half of our body is made up of water, and we lose it all day. Even if you're not sweating profusely, you're still losing water all day, and you need to replenish it often. But what's awesome is the water of the Word, it is, you'll, you won't thirst. You know, it says um, that the water that Christ gives, remember the woman at the well? I think that's in John 4, 14 gave her living water, okay, and you will not, it's, it's thirst quenching, that's what I wanted to say, it will quench that thirst when, you know, we all have that spiritual desire, okay, I'm hurrying, yep, so hydrate, it's important, uh, the next thing, exercise, okay, focusing on areas which need attention, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 4, 8, for bodily exercise profiteth little, but that doesn't mean it's not important, Okay, so we all need to be well aware that daily exercise is necessary to good health, okay? But the verse, a little bit before it and the verse previous and then after it, it says, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness, and then it says, but godliness is profitable unto all things. So see, one is for today, okay? That bodily exercise, you know, maybe you go on a walk or you lift weights, whatever you choose to do to get some movement in. That's for today, okay? Remember our health, good health for the moment. You're doing something good. But the other one, that godliness, it's for today and forever, okay? Mm -hmm. Because you're doing it for the Lord. It's spiritual, so it lasts forever. It's something that is gonna be good always. You're helping yourself, okay? So we're to be active in being godly. Everything we do, we should give God preeminence and honor him with our conduct. And when I say everything, I do mean everything. Like every choice we make, really, it should be. Does this bring God glory? Okay, and I know some people are like, well, you're nitpicking. Well, I mean, if you're having a hard time with this, start with the big stuff, I guess. But just wake up in the morning and look, Lord, you know, what can I do to glorify you? I mean, it can even start with what you eat. Is this going to help me to be able to serve you? And I know some people think it's crazy, but when you change your mind on these things, you're going to see that you're honoring the Lord in everything that you do. So what we, what we put on, what we wear, what we read, what we listen to, what we, it all goes together. I know I'm being repetitive, but that's because it's all part of your spiritual health. Okay, so be active. Uh, third, third John 1-2 says, 
Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. So tend to your health physically so that you can be spiritually active. You know, if you don't feel good, and, and if that's your own doing, again, I'm not talking about like if you have, you know, diseases or whatever, cancer and stuff that keeps you out, we understand what that means. But if you are sabotaging your own health and you know it, um, you're not going to be able to be used of the Lord. I mean, it's just the way it is. So we need to be mindful of that, that I need to take care of myself physically so I can reach out to people and be a blessing and attend church faithfully and grow and serve. And the best exercise, walk with the Lord. <laughs> I, just thought, I thought that was funny because I like to walk. <laughs> now, one more thing. I, I don't have it in my notes, but I thought about it this morning. Rest. Rest is important. Jesus Christ himself rested. He came apart. You know, he had, you know, the disciples. Then he had the, you know, smaller group. But then he even had to come apart from them. So I don't have all the verses, but, you know, it says, Come unto me, all ye that labor, and I will give you rest. Rest is important. Okay, you're not lazy if you need rest. And even spiritually, sometimes you just need that alone time with God and rest in Him. And it is sweet. So, just like with our physical health, we're going to feel good after each choice. Results will be quite visible over time. Don't give up. Okay, just like, well, I didn't read my Bible today or I didn't read it this week. Well, that doesn't mean you give up. Just, no. You just try again, okay? That's what I tell my kids. That's what I tell myself. You just keep going, okay? So we know we need to, uh, in order to succeed with our physical health, we need to have a plan. People meal prep. They set aside time for exercise, all that stuff. Your spiritual health requires the same, and out of the two, it's the priority, okay? It's the priority for sure. So I hope that helps you and gives you something to think about this next week. Thanks for letting me share.